Is that Tarzan in the house? His name is the real Tarzan. My man, the real Tarzan, came down. 24-year-old Michael Holston out on the water at night. With its scenes of charging rhinos, savage pygmies, and the great hunter. Tarzan. All right, guys, so you guys saw outside, you guys saw his entry point where his gym's at and his other feeding stations are, but check out the house, dog. It's, it's insane. So, so you see where we have our office over here, and it's kind of cool because everything's about five feet off the ground outside, and everything else is set up for turtles. Dude, this is turtle haven. And, and also fossils, we're big on fossils. Yeah, man, I remember last time you showed me how like Megalodon teeth and stuff. Yeah, yeah, we've got some of that, you can see over here. Wow. Uh, a lot of it we found, <laughs> some of it I bought, some of it I traded for. These are these are pathological teeth, you know, teeth, teeth that are problematic in nature from 40 million years ago. There's some, wow. Here's some dinosaur eggs. <laughs> here's a little tiny dinosaur in, what? in, in this sedimentary rock from China. These are, these are so dinosaur eggs from China. Sick, man. Um, two biggest mako shark teeth. My friend Lewis found those. Here are mammoth tusks. Turtle skulls. I don't think they're real, though. I think they're kind of like put together. These are real turtle parts that we found. Uh, tortoise spurs of lower mandible. These are from millions and millions of years ago. Um, here's tortoise. These are, these are from a tortoise that I gave to Peter Pritchard when he was living. Um, he put together a, a, a bunch of this stuff from a tortoise that I had found in one spot. Um, here are different antlers from African beasts. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would tell you what they were if I knew for sure, but I don't know why. These are baby megalodon teeth. All of these are, Dude. all those are the same as, as, as like this. Sorry. So these grow into this someday. Wow. But we know those to be megalodon because like anything else, if you, if you study it enough, you find out uh, just, just different places that we... Dude, we so sick, in, man. Florida back in the days. Oh, that is awesome, so man. So all this came out of one spot, this one, this no one mouth. No way. This is from a creek in Gainesville called Possum Creek. Um, there's different stuff over here. Like this is the sloth vertebra. These are sloth teeth. Um, this is a this is a shark vertebra. Now this is Dude. now don't ask me how we know this, but we know this. This is sloth poop from about you know, 10, 15 million years ago. Wow! All these different carvings. That's when sloths were gargantuous, yeah. huh? Yeah, the giant ground sloths. This this is one of the teeth. These are these would be thirty foot. But there's there's probably about eight different species of sloths. Wow, man! This is so sick. Titanothier from out west. Um, these are different astragalus, it's ankle bones of mammoths and mastodons and giant ground sloths. Elephants here. Wow, um, ankle bones, guys. I, I can't collect the expensive stuff, so I can't, like, this is a rhinoceros. Uh, is that rhinoceros? No, that's a sloth. Let me see, where's the rhinoceros? Uh, this is the rhinoceros. So bones. sick. <clears throat> whale teeth, whale vertebrae. Um, let's see. Here's a handbag from the from the early 1900s made out of a crocodile. What? That was too cool. Some old bottles. Yeah, man. This is kind of my Indian section over here. This is some crafts made in India. And and I've got more turtles from India. <laughs> so sick, man. Mastodon jaw with a tooth in it. Bro, uh, my dad, my is, dad is, is, is really into antiques. And he's, he's, he's too old now to, to be on his own. He's in a hospital. But he had all these antique bear traps. Yeah, I see and, and those. Cool stuff like that. Um, some of the biggest things I've ever seen. Now, this house did have one nice thing about it when we got here. It had this barnwood area. Mm -hmm. And so we, we worked with that. And one side had like cheap yellow pine. So we took that down. And this barnwood extended here. We took that and we put it up. 
And so what you're going to come into now is like an antique store. So I made this clock myself about 20 years ago, but this barn wood was here. And these are saws and different things from my dad. My dad had these uh, in wow. his cabin. And back here's a picture of my dad. He looks kind of like Willie Nelson in that picture. Um, <laughs> we're, out, we're out shark fishing. He had a 400 pound mako shark about an hour after that on the line. This is our family crest from Argentina. Wow. Um, so these are all saw blades from, from, from the US going back into the 1800s. Some raccoon skins. Um, you can't get these anymore. I mean, they're, they're, they're gonna be outlawing all the furs and everything before long. This is a Pine yeah. Martin, this is a Fisher. Old um, school stuff, man. Yeah, you know, this, uh, this is something my dad had. I knew it right away because the feed store has one of these. This is to crop the antlers on cows. This is, oh, man. This is for logs, grabbing logs. Uh, there's one up there for grabbing ice. Yeah, that thing right there. Caps and guns, and it's, it's kind of like I said, it's kind of like an antique store. My dad had a lot of this stuff. Like an old school man cave. Exactly. Um, old tools. Um, this is um, a, a Singer sewing machine. Now, it has a serial number. I cleaned it up. He had about 20 of these, and I just found one I thought I could clean up, so I cleaned it up nicely, built a little thing for it. If you look up the serial number, you'll see that that particular machine was made in October of 1924. And my dad would, would walk around his property in upstate New York, and he'd find rocks that were, that were kind of uniformly oval-shaped. And he'd make Indian um, like like uh, tomahawks and things out of them. So he had a lot of these tools uh, in, in his cabin. He had these old flings. Uh, they're probably from the 1950s or 60s. These are old, old leg hold traps. I know a lot of people aren't into that thing, and I'm not promoting that. I'm just saying I'm just yeah, part of American just, history. This, this is history, man. Yeah, yeah. and um, big old snapping turtle shell up yeah, there. His, his, my dad had a bunch of those. Um, he so had all these sick. scales. There's fish type game scales, mm -hmm. mouse trap, um, had this carved eagle, uh, these big hooks, those food presses. So um, sick, man. And here's, remember I told you my dad makes these types of things. So he made this from a, uh, a cow's jaw, some kind of a weird tomahawk thing. He made this from one of those rocks that I was showing you. Nice. And, and a friend of mine was looking at it and he goes, you know, if you take this thing off over here and you take this off over here, this is actually like some sort of a peace pipe that he made, which I didn't even realize that it opened up and it, and it actually, it was a working pipe. If yeah. he wanted to be, he just wanted to make that to be cool to make it. So and he, sick. he offered thousands of dollars and he wouldn't take it. He just, yeah. he just wanted to make them. And uh, different irons and, a, and a, a grinder. He had these different things here from the old logging trays. It's like going back in a time machine, you he, know? He had this, Mike, you're gonna love this. He had this and I knew what it was right oh, away. It's like the first snake, snake hook. stick. Yeah. And and I say, well, I put these things up there to give you an example so you can see. That is so this, sick. This this is from the eighteen hundreds and this is from the two thousands. Wow. So, so we're all familiar with these, Pilsen mm -hmm. Tongs and all the other companies that make great ones like these. And and look at that, Mike. I mean that's that is that's, a, that's like a grabber thing. Yeah. From, Probably the oldest one we know of. Yeah, man. I've so, never even seen nothing I like never that. Did I knew it was right away, but I'm like, where the hell did he get that? Because my dad, my dad retired um, about 45 years ago, uh, 40 years ago, and he would spend all his time. He's a registered gun dealer, not an arms trafficker, but just like a collector of antique guns. Mm -hmm. And he would go to every gun show and every antique show and every auction they have in the mountains of upstate New York and Pennsylvania and Maine and all, all that whole Appalachian area. And he'd get all that. I'm, I'm more into books. Yeah. So like if you look at, let me get my glasses out here. If you look at old books, because these are things you can collect and you don't have to be rich to collect them. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, so this is a, a journal in French, which I actually learned French as a kid and it, and it was from 1682 what so this is a book from the from the 1600s that is insane leather bound still uh, still there one of the things you can always get is bibles because uh the people say bibles mm -hmm. so so different bibles um that are old not hard to find if you go to an old bookstore it's like the book of eli coming over exactly here. exactly and so this is this this bible is from i, I gave one to ryan a couple years ago this is this is from a bible from 1848 wow and you know people people cherish these things and, yeah, and a lot of times there's little hand notes and inscriptions in them um different different old stuff whenever you see these leather bindings That's you know it's so going to be something sick. special yeah man so this was a. Uh, 1677 uh, book 1677 guys and and <laughs> you know I, I mean if it's 100 years old i think it's cool like my dad had this book on steel traps okay that book was from 1904 i think or 1906 
but it's all about traps and trapping. And my dad was an outdoorsman, so I kind of grew up around all that hunting yeah. and fishing and his notes to my dad at an I've auction. I've got some old school Frank Buck books. And I, I I appreciate this man. This is so cool, that dog. Is, that is, and that's that's you know that's Americana too. Like if you look, I've got some pics. I'm starting to decorate this way, and I've got some great stuff from you know Chris Gillette. Yeah, man, love okay. Chris Skater Boys. But, but I've also got Bill Haas. Yeah. From the '60s and mm -hmm. '70s. Okay. Um, they have him up at the airport, dude. Right. Yeah. Ross Allen. Uh huh. Ross Allen from the '70s. Okay. Marlon Perkins from Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom from the '60s and the '70s. Classic, dude. Raymond Dittmar's like the original herpetologist. In America, wow. Raymond Dittmar's. I've got I've got Dittmar's books on the shelf from the 30s. So then, sick. Then you've got modern people like Bill McCord, who's you know the modern day equivalent of these people. Mm -hmm. You know uh, David Fabius from Uruguay, probably the top turtle guy in all of Uruguay. Russ Gurley, author. He puts together the Turtle and Tortoise Preservation Group every year mm -hmm. in Mesa, Arizona. Okay, these are these are these are gods. These exactly. are the people that I worship because they are just so Peter Pritchard. I mean, you know, look. Clive Longdon, pretty much the inventor of the, the radiomorphs. morphs. Wayne Hill, the, the, the originator of the National Reptile Breeders Expo. Um, uh, me showing off a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Flag pulling over right, there. Right? Um, just a cool wood turtle picture. Um, uh, my buddy Mike, who breeds the African Borables. Uh, this was a meeting in D.C., which had a lot of top reptile people in there. Mark, Kim Mark Kim Bell, Bell, yeah. Uh, Gary from ZooMed. Um, wow, man. Um, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna get in trouble. Todd from from um, uh, Timberline. Uh, Marshall Myers, the original the original pet industry uh, uh, supporter lobbyist since the 70s. Uh, Kurt Harpsmeyer, Phil Goss, president of US Arc. Mm -hmm. There's Chad Brown, Russ Gurley again, uh, Cameron. Um, uh, just so many names in here, so many faces that, that you probably recognize. Cameron looks like Anthony Bourdain. <laughs> he does, he does. Hopefully yeah. he has a better ending of his story. Of course yeah. he will. This is, uh, this. I serve on the board of directors for the state laboratory here in Florida for the par Florida Department of Ag. And these are two, flanked by two sexy PhDs, uh, and they let me in the picture. Um, but when we opened the new lab building, $11.6 million, I think, the state appropriated. And it's a beautiful, beautiful new laboratory. And anybody, wow, anybody in the country can submit samples and get great discount prices uh, on, on tests for your animals. Um, me, me in the third grade, you know. Uh, well, what, what right you there. Um, <laughs> this is uh, Dr. Reddy Bombanini uh, and his family. They, he's the director of a state lab. Um, wow. Couldn't stop on a, a 95 fast enough to take a picture with that. Um, <laughs> two of our, our uh, former uh, agriculture uh, commissioners, uh, um, mental blank, let's see, um, I should come back to these. Um, Charles Bronson, like the actor's name, except he's the family that, that gave the, the land to the state to build a state lab. Mm -hmm. um, he's also ag commissioner uh, about a dozen, 15 years ago. And... Um, Doyle Connor, he's Florida's Ag Commissioner from 1960 to 1990. Now he's passed, but was a great guy. And, and tell you a quick story about him, we're, we're in an agriculture meeting, which we have every quarter, where all our animal industries are represented and they let the reptile industry be one of these industries. And Commissioner Connor, you know, once you're a commissioner, you always have that title. He's, um, he's probably about 80 and he, he nodded off at one point. And there's this big hot argument going on with all the industries, the cattle and, and equine and, and, and all of us, reptiles, everybody's there. There's probably 15 industries and we're all having this heated discussion, trying to get to some common ground and not get anywhere. And, and Commissioner Connor like comes to, he like wakes up real quick because he, 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 you know, just passing out for a few seconds of sleep and catching a nap. And he listens for about a minute and he looks at both sides of the room and I'm sitting right next to him and I'm paying attention. And he puts up his hand there and everybody stopped talking. And he brought clarity and he brought focus and he brought everybody together with two or three quick sentences and explained to everybody where they needed to look and how they needed to think about something because he had been Ag Commissioner for our state for 30 years. Wow. From 60, 1960 to 1990. And then everybody said, yeah, that's right. And I looked over to say kind word about how you, you, you brought the whole room together he was already taking the next nap. <laughs> so, uh, he's know, sharp, even, man. Even in his in his eighties, he was still he was still a you know a, a great leader. Yeah, and man. That's what, that's what we needed. This is a Chris Gillette's some of his stuff. Dude, Chris Gillette got some sick yeah. photos, dude. So, so before I moved to that Florida, one's definitely a a, a, a favorite yeah, there. Yeah, that, that's cool. a sick man. Before I moved to Florida, 
I, I wanted to get into albino Burmese. It was in the 80s and it mm -hmm. was becoming a hot thing. So I bought a, an albino male and four head females. Mm -hmm. And then uh, by the time I moved to Florida, they started laying eggs and paying for themselves, thank goodness. And then uh, uh, the, the market just kind of crashed because everybody was producing it. Yeah. So uh, one of them uh, wasn't doing well, one of the big females. And finally it, it, passed, it passed away and I was heartbroken about it. I'd raised it up since it's a little snake. Mm -hmm. And my son was little, he was three or four years old and he used to, we used to take it out and clean the cage and everything. And he's like, dad, that's the holy moly snake because it was so big. It yeah. Was <laughs> So I passed away, so I gave it to my friend Chris Clark, and he gives it back to me about six months later, and, and there it is. Wow. So that's almost 16 feet. Save your baby. Still yeah. got him. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that, man. Yeah, you know, when my son was born, I put an automatic lock on the garage door so the big snakes couldn't get into the house. Yeah. My son was this big. And <laughs> the, snakes eat were, <laughs> the snakes were like that. My dad had this, this cool light. I mean, I, I couldn't come up with a good fixture for him, and he had this from the 1800s. Wow, and man, wires, a, a true antique collector. And the, and the wiring still worked. I mean, I was nervous about it, but it's still worked. Here you can see beavers, uh, snowshoes we used to use to go out on the lakes to, to, to get a beaver. And Dude, the traps what they used to have. saw, too, man. The um, the license plates, real quick, um, okay, the orange and the green are kind of ornamentals. The one above that is the New York World's Fair of 1940. My mom was born in New York in 1940. Um, if you come up a little bit more, I can show you. Um, some of them are just ornamentals. That yellow Buenos Aires one, that's a 1939 plate. If you Google search 1939 Buenos Aires license plate, that particular plate will still come up on your phone. Wow. And my dad was born in Buenos Aires in 1939. Uh, that West Virginia flowers plate um, came, came from a creek in West Virginia. Uh, my son and I were, were just walking around after we were in D.C. the day before seeing all the monuments and everything. And in and right 1997, somebody had just thrown that in the water and, and we had just found that in the Potomac River. Uh, New York Empire State, 62. I was born in New York in 62. Uh, upper corner right there behind that spider web that I can't reach in my duster <laughs> is uh, New Jersey, 1915. And my maternal grandparents, my, my mom's parents, were both born in New Jersey in 1915. So I thought it was cool to have that. Wow. If you come around over here, remember I said it's a barn style house? Mm -hmm. We didn't have no closets. So I made this as a closet. Dude. Because you know, the whole thing has got the slanted roofs. You know, uh, Ben Grishaw makes these. Um, these no frogs. Barking tree frogs. <laughs> barking tree right? frogs, right? yeah. Right. And you can see, look, 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 look over here, you can see. Oh, yeah, you got them everywhere. They're so cool, so, man. So Ben's an artist, you know? So yeah. I commissioned Ben. Like you see, we've got two different bedrooms. The girls designed the, the pink room, right? And I said, Ben, I, I want a barking tree frog, but I want it albino. Yeah. So he, he, he made it. He charged me a few dollars uh, to, to make it. And, and this, is, this is a hand-carved wooden. You can see he's, so his sick, inscription man. on the back. And he made this albino. And just, you know, it was a new pose. He didn't have anything like this. And I thought it was awesome. And it, and it goes real well with this room. Yeah. And that's why my office team, you know, designed this room. And you can see how we figured out how to make closets in a room that has no closets. Yeah. And so each room has a chair. It's kind of like it's a guest bedroom. So you yeah. have a bed chair a desk decent view tv yeah man um you, you know you got your closet your cabin your mini mini bars and then your fridge when you, when you get thrown out you can come stay and, <laughs> yeah and uh and so then then ben uh had had made a cast of that albino so i said ben so that so that i can get some melanistic ones made up right oh yeah no problem you know 50 bucks <laughs> you know real cheap so he made he made black ones for me because this, so well, this is kind of like the guys guest bedroom yeah so you got you got your black and gray tokay gecko room. yeah also from ben <laughs> man and, i gotta give me some of those man those are yeah, sick it, it is pretty neat i'm gonna be hitting you up real soon ben i had some decorations well, from you like i said when you get kicked out <laughs> you got a place for you i know where i'm coming and um you know I, I grew up in new york city and my grandfather used to take me to central park and if you ever saw the old movie, The Highlander, there's a scene where they're on this bridge talking about it. And, and Con Connor McCloud is talking to this guy who was also a mortal from Africa. And they're talking about this is the gathering and all this. Well, that was this bridge in Central Park. And my grandfather used to always call it the bicycle bridge. So I saw this for sale one day. And I was like, man, I think it was, it was on something online. And I just, I just took the corner off so that it went better with the room. But that was that same bridge in New York City. And uh, this kind of need to have your... your your background, your heritage, you know, around where you can have it. Mm -hmm. um, if you come in, this is um, this is some uh, magnolia wood that I got uh, from a mill up in up in Gainesville area, and we just cut it to fit in here. And nice, made man. that work. Um, 
my bedroom. Um, you can see the I've, got, I've got the command and control center here. Yeah, man. We've <laughs> got eyes on everything. We're looking at the front gate, around the clock with sensors. We're looking at, and then you can you can overlook it. You can step out here and just see. So sick. The place. Yeah, dude, you know, insane. So you're looking at it all. Yeah, man, this is and epic, we've got, dude. We've got sensors and lights that come on, so I get alerts yeah. every time something's moving around. But you know, the dogs, the, the dogs, dogs are on eyes it. on everything. Mm -hmm. The dogs are barking. You, can it, you got the perfect dogs for that, man. Yeah, South African borbos are no joke. We're building. <laughs> we're gonna build a herd. Yeah, like, as you should. I still want to get a. Um, I want to get the Rhodesian Ridgeback. Yeah. I had one of those before. Here, spin around with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I've got my melanistic. And again, we had to figure a way to come up with, a, with the whole closet thing. Dude, you so, are so so you got and then you got color coordinated storage. <laughs> storage that goes oh, nice! Because this is this is the way the room the room didn't have this wall here. We're just trying to figure out how to make closets. So this is this is what we came up with. So and of course, I've got some near and dear to me that I keep keep eyes on. Your little babies yeah. before you go to bed every night. Yeah, well, these are all these are. These are golden flames, which I'll show you some more downstairs, but these are special ones because they've got some extra genes in them that are beyond even that. Man. And up, up, you can see, you can see your girl right here. <laughs> <laughs> We've got eyes on everything. That's cool, man. And I, I keep some things which maybe you don't show. But, <laughs> man, what an awesome, nice I, I love your little, your, your pull-up bar. Every, you know what, to stretch the back, everywhere mm -hmm. you go, you should have that, you should have that ability to just, yep. just, just stretch out, especially when you get, you know, to my age, you start to think about stretching a lot more. Yeah. I mean, the bathroom's got it, wherever it is. Paper towel know. holders and stretchers. Oh. Here, look, I'll show you. This, I, this somebody, I, I, the big swatch. Oh, that's nice, somebody, man. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Got that at the TTPG uh, reptile show after. Again, with the, the mirror. Mm -hmm. You know, you got everywhere you got to have paper towels. More turtles. Dude, the turtle uh, knobs is, are so cool, man. Yeah, this is um, Hobby Lobby. Yeah. yeah it's like five bucks. You can't go wrong. <laughs> yeah. But you know, you make the most when you put a big mirror in the room. Mm -hmm. You don't feel like you're in a little tiny bathroom. Yeah, anymore, it feels you know? big. Yeah, and then, of course, anytime you need to stretch, you, <laughs> you do that. But you know, the problem was like, there were no closets. The, the whole upstairs had one little 30 inch door. One little cubby, right that's here. it. And so I come up with this. I found stuff online. I knew we could steal the ideas. Mm -hmm. And the other one we came up with too. And, and so you got some closet space. But it's, it's kind of like, okay, now I'm ready to go start my day, work out or what have you. And you go through like the, the antiques uh, you know, gauntlet here. Yep. Just have a little bit of everything. So I'll keep decorating up this way with more pictures. But I got to send you some, some, some stuff, man. Yeah. It's, you know what? I, I'm, I'll get I'm you gonna, a nice little small one over there. You can Throw on here, so oh, that's and sick, Yankees man. Fan. My son got me this one year. This is pieces from the old stadium when they tore it down. Wow. Here's, here's stuff from me growing up. Oh Before yeah, see, this is what I love, like, man. Yeah, I wasn't even, born. I wasn't even thought of yet. Uh, Look at that handsome stud right there, boy. This is coming to Florida <laughs> yeah. my first time. This is Arizona, first time. Wow, my grandma, man. my dad in his cabin. Uh, Venom snake. This is, this is, um, I had, you know, I had a girlfriend uh, not long ago say, well, you're going to be taking that picture of that girl down, right? And I said, well, <laughs> it has meaning to me. She's like, well, I don't think you should have pictures of girls up if you're not dating that girl. And I said, yeah. well, I said, two weeks later, these towers came down. Ah, oh, man. So this is taken from the Statue of Liberty. I look terrible. My son looks terrible. Even the hot girl looks terrible. But you know what? The Twin Towers are in it. Yeah, and man. I don't have any other pictures of that. College days, Beautiful. St. John's, my son when he was little. Um, my second parents, uh, college days, fossil hunting. Wow, man! My parents' wedding day. What a what a blast from the past, right, man! Right. And, Look uh, at this. That's you fishing down there. This is me when I was three. This is my son when he was three. <laughs> this is in Florida. You can see this is in Montauk, New York, with a bluefish when I was three years old. Oh man! This is an old picture. The worms are starting to eat it, but uh, you can see. Uh, uh, you know, I used to believe it. I used to work in in, in fashion in retail in New York mm -hmm. uh, when I first got out of school. And friend, some of these people are still friends of mine to this day. We That's still awesome, we still man. get together. Uh, they come up here every year for spring training because we're all Yankees fans. Nice. And uh, <laughs> different. I have different checks. You know, we had that hurricane hit. I had people sending me checks. And mm -hmm. I, I didn't cash them, but I just appreciate the sentiment. Yeah, man. And then I had um, some from my second dad before he passed. Um, didn't cash That's them. That's awesome stuff, them. man. Then I got two from the government. I cashed them. Uh, one of them was from Biden, and the other one was from Trump, and it was on January 6th of last year. So I figured that's probably a, an important day to save. Yep. And, uh, and like that. So you can see 
it's Dude. not big, but it, it, it's kind of interesting. Man, cool. it's so insane, man. Your last place was magnificent. And this place, you have so much going on. You're so neat and organized. And it's it's impressive, man. Like, it's a, it's, it's inspirational, to say the least, dude. Like, I'll show you something over here. This is, uh, this guy wrote a book about turtles and, and he put our turtle picture on the front. Nice. I was checking out, a friend of mine had these books, he's a book dealer, and he had really cool pictures and stuff in them. And it was all about um, the animals and some of the terminology is kind of off, you know, like it's called this a, a tortoise. Yeah. And, you know, that was a bog turtle from New York and, and different things. And, and the thing about the book is these books are all the animals from New York State from 1842. Wow. That was pretty cool. Was pretty <laughs> yeah, cool. I mean, antiques to say the least, yeah. dude. Um, here, take, take these things off for a second. Nice ones. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There you go. Put your finger here. Uh, uh, <laughs> thank you. Ames, you found your thing. <laughs> Now she's not going to leave. Oh, man, this is great. Be right back, guys. We're back in your other layer. Yeah, yeah. So this is kyanite, a mineral from Brazil. Uh, uh, kyanite. Never heard of it. It was a cool thing. Put a piece come up here. These are amethysts, mostly from Brazil. This one I thought just looked like a piece of watermelon, so I had to get it. <laughs> yeah. I got it anyway, right? It looks delicious. Right? This is some other kind of a mineral called vanderite from Morocco. Cow shark teeth, crow shark teeth, fluorite, which you get fluoride from. Yeah. This is uh, another, another type of thing. Uh, this one, I show this to different people. Some girls see phallic symbols. I don't see it, but I'm a guy, so I don't look for that sort of thing. Um, oh, these are these are really cool. These are the fishing boats in um, Sumatra in this part of the, of the world, New Guinea, wow. and they they cut the ends of the boats off when the boats are retired, mm -hmm. and so people buy them. So so I, I got some. I got one about 20 years ago, and I thought it was cool. And have you been there? Again. I've never been, but I have a lot of friends who go. Cameron yeah, Bush yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so then. Uh, then I saw somebody started bringing them in, and uh, it's just got a few more of them. There's, I mean, they're pretty cool things. I mean, look at look at the how intricate they carved these things. Wow, this was man. this was the front of their fishing boat that they literally paddled out to sea every day to go out and fish. So you sick. Know? Petrified wood from out west in the United States. Mm. Uh, this thing weighs about 15 pounds. Um, bumblebee jasper is a really cool mineral. I want to say from Mexico, but I'd be lying if I said that I knew for sure. I just thought they were really cool. Of course, a turtle I had to get. And the colors are really cool. All our pathological teeth, you know, the form teeth are really rare. These are uh, murexes. It's one of the oldest shells in, in Florida or actually in the United States. Um, 14, 15 million years old. This one I found, and this one was found by a fossil hunter named Frank Garcia. And in fossils, he's the guy. He's one of the greatest hunters ever. Um, you got different bats, trilobites. Um, you, if you check this out, okay, so here's, these are trilobites. You know, there's kind of a, people, people recognize that usually as a, a very old kind of a fish insect type of thing. Mm -hmm. But they, they find them different ways. Oh. See that? That's kind of cool too, you know? Yeah. And so I'm all about those kinds of things. We're fossil hunting in the Peace River. Um, my son's 27. When he was five, he, he's fossil hunting and we're digging gravel from the river. It's about knee deep. And a friend of mine and I were digging hard and looking, finding things. And my son says, Dad, I, I found a bottle. I'm like, well, be careful, Jason. I'm not looking at him. I said, be careful. Don't get cut. He goes, no, Daddy, it's not broken. I said, okay. He goes, has writing on it. I said, what does it say? He goes, I can't read. I'm five, Dad. I said, Spell it. He goes, C-L-O-R-O-X. It was a Clorox bottle. Oh, so we crap. looked it up. And it was from the late 1800s, or early 1900s. It was pretty cool. Um, so sick. And then here's an interesting geo. Check this one out. So this is a rock. And, Man. you know, it's, it's, it looks interesting. But oh. That's pretty wow. cool, right? Wow. Dude. So you got you got it. You can't just be into reptiles. I'm a reptile expensive. guy first, but you got to be into everything. <laughs> of you know, course, you man. You're a, fossils, this is your thing, man. I I I respect it. Isn't that cool? You see that? Man, and, that's sick. And uh, of course, antiques. Of course, antiques. You've got um, uh, this is a Himalayan uh, mineral found only in the Himalayans. It's like a Himalayan quartz. 
but I'm not sure that's the exact right name. Pyrite looks like gold. Um, these are from Peru. These are carvings of Mata Mata. I'll show you a real one. Uh, my second mom passed last year. Um, she couldn't go to the hospital because of COVID, so she cancer caught her and crept up on her too fast. Oof, so that, her man. son is like my brother says to me, you know, take whatever you want out of mom's stuff. because because I got so much stuff, I don't know what to do with it. And I said, you know, I gave her this when I first went to Florida in 91. And it was, it was kind of a gag gift for, for, for Valentine's Day, but she liked it so much she put it on the mantle. And I said, you know, if it meant a lot to her, it means a lot to me. Yeah, man. And my dad found this at one of his auctions, gun shows, or whatever it was. And, so um, sick. And yeah, and I, and I saw this on Antiques Roadshow one day, something very similar, uh, same artist and everything. And they're looking at it, and it's a bigger version. It's a little taller. And it's, it used to be a fountain for like the, the garden, mm -hmm. but it wasn't wasn't working. It was old. And they're looking at it, and they're like, yeah, this is from the American artist so and so. I forget his name, and it was from the late '40s or early '50s. And and they say, yeah, it's in good shape. And, what, and it was exactly the same thing. It was just a little bit bigger. And this is about 15 years ago now that I'm watching this on Antiques Roadshow. And the guy says, well. Uh, we believe that conservatively at auction, this would be worth between forty-five and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> like that, if you see any more of those, grab them. <laughs> Get them, grab please. Them. Yeah, this is somebody in my fossil club is a welder. He made a giant shark's tooth. That's sick, man. And, and and different bats. My son's first fish, a little bluegill. He made sure that we cooked it up. Yeah. And he used two. And um, these are different artifacts. This was found in the Mississippi River. 30, 40 years ago, it was some kind of a giant axe head, um, different locks from from way back in the day. So sick, man! And and you know stuff from the 1800s. And I think I think the antiques are just that cool. Yeah, man, for sure. It's like, a blast from the past. Yeah, look look at how this one works. See if I get it right. Let's see. It goes like this. I mean, <laughs> oh. like, what is that? You know? Yeah, man. Like, different stuff like that. It's the evolution of locks, you know, over time. And this is uh, an axe head from, I don't have my glasses on, you tell me what that says. Let's see. Luristan, battle axe, Persian Empire, 1000 to 600 BC. <laughs> so, kind of cool stuff. Yeah, kind of cool, man. You know? That's an understatement. Yeah, one of our fossil club guys found this in the Peace River. I don't know when it was from or anything like that. It was just kind of a neat little brass thing. Oh, wow, it's a necklace or something, huh? My dad had this, and it, and it was, it was Dude, with receipted. That is heavy, huh? A, it was a prison lock. <laughs> oh, yeah. So he had that, and he had a prison mirror. This was a, um, a set of wire cutters I found sticking out of the mud when I was a kid years ago. Um, okay, here's a good one. Um, we're going through the Venice Shark Tooth Festival about five or six years ago. And this one woman from this Russian lady, she's selling different uh, amber from Russia. They have their own type of amber there. And she had different things from cave bears. So I was like, wow, that's a really cool cave bear molar, you know? And you can, you can zoom in, you can see a little bit of that if you want. And here's a really piece of substrate that had teeth and bones. And it wow. was natural. I mean, this was actually like that. So. I picked this up and I knew what this was from my early days as being an outdoorsman because raccoons and bears are similar. So I told Amy, our wonderful office manager, what this was. And she says, ooh, we have to get that. <laughs> so so do, you know, do you know what this bone is in the bear? Raccoon has the same bear, the same bone. So that's what I knew it from because raccoons and bears are all part of the weasel family. Mm -hmm. right? So do you know what this bone is? This is the bone that the bear has. <laughs> but that's from that's from like forty thousand years ago. Crazy. Yeah. He's got a he's got a bone in his pants. Yeah. She has one of the for you. Oh yeah? See. What do you got? Wait, 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 wait. Where's my horse? I don't know if you want that on video. What's that? Uh oh. We've got a office dex pets. <laughs> These are special babies. Oh my goodness. This is a uh, Rhode Island. Cyber rocks and snake net turtles. Rhode Island and a cyber rock. Oh my goodness. Look at them. All right, school us. <laughs> All right, so the cyber rock is a little more aggressive. I mm -hmm. notice sometimes that it kind of, you know, tries to nip at the 
the Rhode Island, mm -hmm. but they both pretty much get along. They're easy. They love to eat salmon. They'll eat regular pellets, and they also eat superworms. These guys have long necks. <laughs> yeah, they think we're going to feed them. That's why they're, you know. Man, they look, they look athletic. Long legs, huh? Look at this feet. Look at the eyes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, so cute, man. Wow. Look at that. So when they're in the water and you go feed them, they just their neck goes like this, like a snake, pretty much. That guy down there is funky too. This one is this one has a little more of a He's shy. Well, he looks shy, but he's a little bit of a strong will. <laughs> I have seen him take a worm from the Rhode Island, just right up his mouth. Oh. Look the eyes. So cute, huh? Oh, adorable. You just can't not love a baby turtle. Especially one with a neck like that. <laughs> and their eyes. So cute, man. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the baby we do? Nicole. These ones are yellow ones. These are babies. That's why we just take care of them here. They're baby babies. How, so, how old are they, these guys? This ones are, I will say maybe three months. Wow. But when they hatch, they're like the size of a dime, pretty oh, much. Oh, like your pinky nail, huh? Now, they are mean. Yeah? They are mean. I saw one yellow mod, just a little bigger than this, kill. A Oh no! Oh, they're feisty then. Yeah, the yellow mods are mean, so we don't. That's why those two babies we keep them by themselves because wow. those babies can pick on a guy bigger. Just this guy. <laughs> feisty. Oh my goodness! Look at this. And then they're very. Oh. Active. Is that what I think it is? A two-headed turtle. Oh my goodness. That's like one in a trillion. What are the odds of that? One in a billion. I didn't have to explain anything. No, nah, that's okay. It's nice and clean. Wow. Those guys also love to eat worms, super worms, and salmon, of course, though. Spoil. So these guys are on basically small pellets, salmon, blood worms, super worms. Yep. That's cool, man. Oh, this guy flipped over. And guys, check out this little guy. I don't know if you guys seen it properly, but he has two freaking heads. Oh my goodness. What? Amy, how many two headed turtles have you seen in your life? More uh, than anybody else, <laughs> I'm well, guessing. I say we have usually one to two sets a year, pretty much. So sick. Well, last year we had the, the Reeves. We had some Reeves. But they, we they had the Snappers. And Phyllis and Oscar. Phyllis and Oscar, we still have them. Okay, can you explain this? Mm -hmm. School us on why this happens. Why this How happens? it happens? What are the odds? Just take us to take me well, to some, kindergarten. Some, yeah, something happens in the development of the egg where there's two embryos in the egg at the same time and they usually don't survive but sometimes they fuse together in some way that allows their body systems to work because all the systems have to work one of the problems with two-headed turtles is they don't usually live even if they hatch they don't usually live because you have to have two embryos come together in a way and they're siamese people too but they're extremely rare and the same thing with you know ones that live i hate to say it that way but people who survive and the bodies have to be basically working as one it's not like a body that grew two heads. It's two, you can see by the shell, it's two separate turtles that came together. Ah. And at some point, this one, something was going on with the genes where it only had four legs and it only had one tail. But a lot of times they have two tails. And a lot of times they have a lot of legs. The craziest one I ever saw was a red ear slider hatchling about 15 years ago. And it had a hand sticking up out of the middle of its back. What? And I said, 
if that hand could be taught to go like that, you'd be a millionaire, you know? But it, it had the hand, the hand would go like that, and it was how it was connected to the body. We have no idea. I mean, nature does a lot of things right, but not all the things are right. And that had just one hand up there, and somebody bought it from us right away, but you almost never see it. So the embryos come together. I'm not as good a biologist. I have friends who are that could explain it, but basically the two embryos have to come together. And that's, that's pretty cool where it actually has everything functioning. Both heads eat, they get along. One thing people don't realize is that many times if you have a two-headed snapper, and so many are hatched captive born in the world between us and China, many times if you have snappers, they're very territorial as they get older. Mm -hmm. And just like a lot of animals, mammals, even humans, and they will, one head will kill the other head, mm. which of course kills the turtle. Yep. So snappers, you gotta be careful. But I've seen some snappers that get along fine too. One of our, one of our favorite Christmas cards had a two-headed snapper. So sick, man. Thank you so much for that. Guys, a world's first, always here at the Turtle Force. Rolling. So Mike, these are wood carvings from Peru and the Peruvian Indians like to make different animal carvings. And this is kind of like their their national turtle or their patron saint or whatever you want to call it. It's, it's a big thing for them. It's a, it's a Mata Mata turtle. And I, I found the carving, but it was awesome. I have them up in my, in my living room. But, but actually, <clears throat> just a couple days ago, an importer friend of mine called me and said, hey, I've got some fresh imported Peruvian Mata Mata turtles. Wow. Would, you, would you like to see them? And I said, sure. So Dude. this is one of the most unique turtles in the world. Shell is extremely similar to a North American snapping turtle, but it's nothing like a snapping turtle. Probably related at some point, going back millions of years, because the, the skin and the heads are similar. But this one has a different type of feeding. Like snappers will snap. They predate, the alligator snappers have a little tongue that wiggles like a worm and draws fish in. Potamatas are different, they have a very long neck. And what happens is they're ambush predators. So when a fish comes nearby, they'll shoot their head out and open their giant mouth so fast that the suction pulls the fish in. So you can see that mouth, it looks like a smile. It's like the only turtle with a true smile. <laughs> yeah. and, and amazing colors. Uh, the Peruvian wow. ones are known to have all this orange on them. And, and the underbelly is insane. And we just, we just had to get a couple because these are such awesome turtles. There's only one guy, a friend of mine uh, in the U.S., that I've ever heard actually breed them. And sometimes they'll come in with eggs, but actually breed them from scratch is my friend Bill Nisling. He's a great turtle breeder. I've learned tons from him, and he's got an amazing place too, but I don't think wow. he lets anybody go there. But he actually has bred a few, uh, hatched a few. Nobody else that I know of has actually started from scratch and hatched a few. Wow. And... Um, He's also, I think, the first person to probably breed Blanding's turtles in Florida. What? Um, yeah, he's, he's a great guy. Um, like I said, Florida's full of some of the best turtle breeders in the world. These are, these are Peruvian Mata Mata turtles. And the thing you know about them is that they're both, of course, four inches. That's how they get imported to the U.S. Mm -hmm. And um, just, just an awesome, awesome turtle. You hardly it looks ever like see leaf these. litter. They do. They really do. And, you know, they're not basking turtles. Uh, most snappers are not. What they do is they come to the surface and they'll lay just by the surface and just absorb the sun that way, but they will not climb out of the water and bass like a lot of maps and, and sliders do from the U.S. Are there any subspecies of uh, these mud -mud I think that I think there are, and it's mostly by geographic uh, separation. Mm -hmm. So the Peruvians tend to be pinker. Um, I want to say there's some in Brazil and Colombia. Yeah. But just check them out. Dude, I, I look think they're at awesome the, turtles. Now, the, 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 the beard, it's like tubercles. How, how do you say that? Yeah, yeah, that's what they are. They're tubercles on it, and they're really sensors. Oh, my and goodness. And they, they pick up on stuff at night or in very dirty water, mm -hmm. which they do. They love tannic, a very very acidic water, uh. and they like warm water. Uh, right now, today, it's uh, about 80 degrees, and this water is probably with evaporation and cooling probably about 77. Probably slightly chilly for them. Um, but we're going to give them some fish a little bit later on, and they usually snap them up real well. Wow, man. Yeah. I've got one at home myself, but these, it's not, it doesn't look like that at all. Yeah, <laughs> it does not look do. like this guy. Part, part of the coloring a lot has to do with diet, too. Like, yeah. if, you, if you get a little shrimp in there, and I hate to say the word shrimp, uh, you know, on video, because people tend to get their animals shrimp and want to see the pretty colors, and the reality is shrimp is like crack. Yeah. It's a very limited nutritional value. It's good to have in the diet. It's like salt in the food. It'll get them to eat the food. But if they just eat shrimp, 
just a diet of shrimp, they'll have all kinds of problems until they die. Uh, see, very, very key. Don't just go on a shrimp diet with your turtles because they want to look cute. They're going to die soon so you don't get your together. So we'll go around and look. Let's skip this one and save it for the end. Yep. Okay, so these are these are Paradox Albino Raider sliders. And Paradox are really cool, except that's a Carmel Pink, but he's in there with the Paradox. <laughs> um, so the Paradox is a really cool gene. It's the only dominant gene that we know of in turtle breeding. And what that means is that either the male or the female can be Paradox, and the babies will also be partially or all Paradox. And they have different color variations like you've never seen. Most of these are born albino color, but they develop all these crazy patterns, and they usually get these black blotches on them. Some of them look just like albinos, and I'll show you some outside a little bit later, but some of them are very lime, born lime color. Um, in this cage, I've got Carmel. Um, these are Golden Flame Florida Red Bellies. One of my favorite turtles. Um, shout out to one of the best turtle breeders in the world, this brilliant guy named Sean Heater. Now, he invented these. So check these out. Look at the colors that come oh into them when they get bigger. Goodness. These are Golden Flame Florida Red Bellies. What? Um, depending upon how much orange they are, like you'll see one that's got a lot more green, might be called the, what they call the wing phase. Dude, they, then you've got ones like this that are super golden flames, sick. and they're just insane turtles, and they get prettier as they get bigger. So they're just an amazing turtle. Um, this is um, this is a red ear, but it's actually got some Rio Grande red ear slider in it, so it's, it's an albino red ear infused with Rio Grande, so you see some of the Rio Grande markings coming out. Um, Let's see what else we've got. Okay, so here are, these are black pearl red ear sliders. It's very similar to the, the charcoal red ears in the US, but these are black pearls from China. And you can see that. Um, these are charcoal peninsula cooters. Really cool. There were a lot of farms producing these, but they're always males. So I got two females. Out of, out of a couple batches, and I was actually able to hatch a bunch last year to be female. So all these are females. So now I can breed all the charcoal radiators I want in a couple of years. Wow. Um, let me see, let's cut down to over here. These are um, what we call camouflage yellow belly. It's just a yellow belly that I found, I was pulling out of hundreds that were dark, really, really dark. And I bred them together and I was getting this really cool camouflage phase. These red ears are, are, are different red ears and they don't count. Now, then two years ago, what started hatching in the camouflage was this. It was a caramel, but mm. it's not a caramel red ear. It's a caramel yellow belly. Nobody can explain it, not even Clive Longman, who's the father of all the red ear morphs. It's, it, as you grow them up, they turn into pure, full-on yellow bellies. They never, they're never exposed to caramel red ears. I have no idea why that's in there. A couple years ago, when these were worth three grand, I'd have been rich, but they're just worth a few hundred now, but they are caramel yellow bellies, very, very rare. Uh, we've only hatched about a dozen ever. Um, wow. Probably one of the coolest things I'll show you is now, this is some of, these are what some of these charcoal peninsula cooters look like. Nothing like the normal colored ones. Really dark yeah, coloring. They are yeah, really dark coloring, really serious grays. And I've got um, kind of a sunburst typo phase here and my favorite is this what is peninsula that? cooter and that is funky. yeah we, we 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 hired a full security team at this point and we've got our hands on this one um, <laughs> yeah. this one will be breeding in a couple years oh look at the inks on that thing yeah yeah oh, and, and then over, over here i've got a t positive albino map turtle, which is awesome because I have I have some hypo map turtle females to go with him. And he's a guy, as you can see, he's all mailed out. And you can see even in different species, you can see the difference between a, a male and a female. The tail on the male is super long. You can't miss it. Thick. And the female, I wish that, I wish that she was a, was a male because then I could do a lot more breeding with her. Yeah. So these are two of the coolest. This is teapot. You can just make out the, the red in the eyes of that T-positive albino. Wow. Not normally aggressive, but he's used to being spoiled, so yeah. so like that. And uh, I, I want to break him out into, and as soon as the weather gets a little warm, I'll break him out. Yeah. Um, Keep an eye on your babies, you know. 
This is our incubator uh, that we use on a lot of the turtles. It's, and you can see some red foots in there also. Um, it's better to heat up your red foot eggs as they're hatching. They'll hatch better uh, sooner. Usually red foots in five or six months. But also, all the sliders we, we hatch in here come out as predominantly female. Not 100%, but predominantly. It's the winter, so we really don't have a lot of eggs right now. Now, sorry to cut you off. Hmm. Um, explain why you have these guys in the incubator and these guys just out. Because I remember last time you had uh, eggs incubated in your closet, in your bedroom, hmm. some in the incubator. So can you, can, you, can you run that down for us? Sure, if I want to make females, put them in the incubator. If I want to hatch them faster, put them in the incubator like the, the, the uh, tortoises. They're going to come out faster in the incubator. They'll hatch, but maybe take nine months if they're out here meaning the tortoises. The sliders and the maps, most of the turtles, they're going to just make females in the incubator. Like we talked about before, not the wood turtles, because they're chromosomal, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, I've never had to worry about it. Um, but but yeah, we want to make females in the incubator. Uh, let me see if there's anything else out here. Um, a couple odds and ends over here. Not... They're so cute, okay. man. So these are these are two of our this is one of our two of our first Sabine map turtles. We breed almost all the map turtles now. I breed the rings, the yellow blotched, Wichita, Mississippi, the false maps, the Texas maps, the Kegels maps, and these are our first Sabine map turtles that we've ever produced. Some of, there's some map turtles with crazy spikes off. There, yeah, those know? are those are the um, the not. Uh, uh, Black knob map turtles. Yeah. Okay, so this is a Texas map turtle here. Um, and we had to separate out just because we raised females. Um, let me think. Let's go outside. Yeah. 